Concrete used in paving must possess workability to be mixed, transported, placed, consolidated, and finished to meet project specifications and constraints without compromising any of the structural or durability characteristics expected of the concrete once it has hardened. To achieve these properties for fresh and hardened concrete, it is often necessary to use chemical admixtures to modify the mixture properties. The most common types of chemical admixtures used in paving concrete include air entraining admixtures, water reducing admixtures, and set modifying admixtures that either delay or accelerate the rate of hydration. Regardless of the type of admixture used, the manufacturer's recommendations for usage and dosage must be followed. Trial batching using the admixture and other constituent materials under expected construction conditions is advised to assess fresh and hardened concrete properties. As concrete freezes and ice forms in the pores, the expansion of the ice causes stress within the concrete. The presence of uniformly dispersed entrained air bubbles can provide the needed empty space to relieve stress. The most common air entraining admixtures follow AASHTO M154 standard and are composed of salts of wood resins, organic salts of sulfonated hydrocarbons, fatty and resinous acids and their salts, salts of protonaceous acids, and synthetic detergents. Air entraining admixtures work with the air-water interface to create stable air bubbles in fresh concrete as it is mixed. The bubbles remain once the concrete is hardened to help protect the concrete against damage from freezing and thawing. Many factors impact the formation of a stable, well-dispersed air system, including the stiffness of the concrete mixture, type and duration of mixing, and temperature. The amount of entrained air required depends on the freeze-thaw exposure condition and the paste content in the concrete. For paving mixtures exposed to freezing and thawing and where de-icers are used, typical air contents range from 5 to 8 percent. The Super Air Meter, SAM, provides a measure of the distribution or spacing of entrained air within a concrete mixture. A SAM number less than 0.20 measured in accordance with AASHTO TP118 indicates 90% probability that the spacing meets American Concrete Institute durability recommendations. Water reducing admixtures reduce the water required to obtain concrete with desired workability characteristics. Freeze-thaw durability of concrete can be improved by reducing the maximum water to cementitious materials ratio. This reduces the porosity and permeability of the hardened concrete paste. Water reducing admixtures conform to AASHTO M194 and can be formulated to have normal, retarding, or accelerating setting characteristics. They are classified as follows. Type A, water reducing. Type D, water reducing and retarding. Type E, water reducing and accelerating. Type F, water reducing high range. Type G, water reducing high range and retarding. Normal or conventional water reducing admixtures, typically classified as type A, D, or E, can reduce water content by approximately five to 10% without exceeding AASHTO M194 time of set limit. They act by adhering to the cement grains and dispersing them through electrostatic and steric repulsion. Normal water-reducing admixtures can affect setting with retardation more common as dosage increases. Normal water-reducing admixtures are also sensitive to temperature and interactions with other mixture constituents can sometimes result 
in flash setting or severe retardation. Mid-range water-reducing admixtures provide water reduction between 6 and 12 percent without the retardation associated with high dosages of normal water-reducing admixtures. They are compliant with AASHTO M194 Type A and often meet Type F requirements. High-range water-reducing admixtures provide water reduction between 12 and 40 percent without retardation. They are often used to produce high-strength concrete with very good workability and extremely low water to cementitious materials ratio. They often meet the requirements of AASHTO M194 type F or G and are not often used in paving grade concrete. Polycarboxylates represent the newest water-reducing admixtures technology. They are more efficient at dispersing the cement grains and have improved long-term slump stability. Hot weather, delivery delays, or extended transport time may make it necessary to slow down or delay the setting rate of concrete. Set retarding admixtures can help slow down the setting time. Set retarding admixtures or retarders follow AASHTO M194 standard and are commonly composed of lignosulfonic acids and their salts, hydroxylated carboxylic acids and their salts, carbohydrate-based compounds such as sugars, sugar acids, and polysaccharides, inorganic salts such as borate and phosphates. Retarders are specified under AASHTO M194 as type B, set retarding without affecting water requirements, type D, set retarding and water reducing, and type G, set retarding and high range water reducing. Retarders tend to directly impact the hydration of the tricalcium aluminate phase, the calcium silicate phase, or both phases in the cement. They are sensitive to temperature and other mixture constituents and must be evaluated for interactions. On the other hand, set accelerating admixtures are used to accelerate the rate of hydration, to promote early setting and strength gain with low temperature paving or to allow early opening to traffic. Accelerators are specified under AASHTO M194 Type C as set accelerating without affecting water requirements and type E as set retarding and water reducing. The most common accelerator for non-reinforced concrete is calcium chloride, which can cause corrosion in embedded steel. Nearly all specifications prohibit the use of chloride-based accelerators if steel is present. Non-chloride accelerators are used for reinforced concrete. Inorganic accelerators act by accelerating the hydration of the tricalcium silicate phase, whereas organic accelerators accelerate the hydration of the tricalcium aluminate phase. There are also accelerators based on aqueous solutions of nanoparticles. The nanoparticles act as nucleation sites for the rapid growth of cement hydration products, particularly calcium silicate hydrate away from the cement grains themselves, resulting in dramatically improved early strength gain. Accelerators can impact the effectiveness of air and training admixtures. Compatibility of admixtures should be evaluated during mixture design and monitored for changes during construction. High dosages of accelerators should be avoided to control performance issues. Some accelerators can even act as a retarder at high dosages. The use of accelerators in hot weather may result in very rapid setting as well as placement and finishing problems. Accelerator dosage may need to be adjusted as temperatures increase. There are other admixtures including hydration control admixtures that can stop hydration and another that will restart it for situations that require extended storage of fresh concrete. Shrinkage reducing, alkali silica reaction inhibiting, and coloring admixtures are also occasionally used in paving concrete. Admixtures are an important component of concrete mixtures to achieve desired short-term and long-term properties.
However, admixtures should not be used to correct for other deficiencies such as poor material quality, mixture design, or placement operations. For all admixtures, the supplier's guidance must be followed for proper dosage and recommended guidelines. For more information about admixtures or other concrete paving applications and processes, visit our website at FHWA dot 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 gov slash pavement or follow FHWA on social media.